Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today we're going to play a tune called Moscow Nights. <laughs> Now I'm going to give you three versions of this lovely tune. Um, the first one, the, a really simple basic version. Secondly, we're going to look at a, a swing version. And thirdly, a speeding up Russian type version. I first heard this tune as a child. Um, we got our first record player along with a series of uh, records, one of which was Kenny Ball's version of this tune. And I loved it straight away, even though I knew nothing about jazz, I knew nothing about Russian music. Um, but I, it, it just had something about it which I've always loved, and I've played it a lot since. It was written in 1955 um, by a pair of uh, Russian composers, and uh, it was written as Leningrad Nights. Um, but the uh, Soviet Ministry of Culture didn't like that title, and they changed it to Moscow Nights. And... Um, it became very famous, uh, not only because of Kenny Ball's uh, 1961 hit single, but also it in Moscow it was used as the time signature on the radio uh, for, the, for the news every half an hour it was played. So a lot of people got to know it. There was also a Chinese version, uh, so um, it was well known there as well. And if you're going to play a, a Russian theme party, and I'm sure lots of you play Russian theme parties, <laughs> this is one of the ones you've got to have, but it's also uh, a very good one for gypsy jazz. So the, the second version of that you will find, uh, find it interesting. But let's start with the basic tune. Uh, I've chosen it in D minor. Uh, there's quite a few different keys it could be in, but D minor is a very good fiddle key. So we're going to do it nice and slow. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Notice that the, the last two lines are repeated. Um, that's very basic, but there's loads of stuff you can do to it. Um, some of which we'll look at in the third version. Let's try the same thing, just up an octave. One, two, three, four. some double stops which uh, will enhance this tune a lot but again we'll come to that uh, let's do that with the, a nice slow backing Okay, now uh, if we speed it up a bit and give it a swing feel, then it becomes something quite different. 
I'll just give you a little flavour and then I'll talk to you about how we can make a solo on this. So one thing you have to do um, to make this swing is you've got to have uh, some quavers and currently <laughs> there's no quavers in the melody. If you've got just... you can't make that swing. So you've got to break some of the notes up. It doesn't matter which notes you break, um, but when the quavers are then da 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 da. little bits of syncopation over the longer notes, like this. So that way you can play the basic melody quite simply, but it, it now sounds a lot different because it's got all this swing. Um, you can mix the melody with solo, so you can play something like this. solo and the melody are all mixed in together and that works pretty well. Um, this is a good one for arpeggio runs, stuff like um, or, um, or that kind of stuff. And once you've learned some of those, they will be useful in all sorts of minor jazz tunes, and indeed any kind of minor tune. Um, the um, major and O minor blues scale will work nicely in this. So, uh, D minor. That's the D minor blues scale. Uh, it briefly goes into F major. So those are the relative major and minor of the same scale. And uh, if you are unsure about what exactly these scales are, I do have a video about the major blues scale and about the minor blues scale. So check those out. I'll just go once through the melody uh, just using um, the minor and major blues scales. how it kind of uh, skims over the chord changes without any difficulty if you're playing the blues scale. Uh, but it is a good one for actually following the chords, which you would do with those arpeggios I was talking about. A good gypsy jazz trick uh, for minor tunes is doing the uh, phrases around the minor 6. Or the, um, the minor 9, which would be... Let me just do those two with a bit of backing.
going to try and follow the chords. The most important ones, I think, to, to not bluff, to actually do, are the E7, D minor. So you've got to know where that's going to come, uh, because an E7, an e for example, has got a G sharp, which is normally not going to appear in the D minor. So try and get those two chords when they come, otherwise it's pretty easy to follow. I'm going to give you a three times round, and uh, unusually I'm going to allow a band in a box um, to play a solo in the middle, an accordion solo. And I've just got the latest version, I'm very pleased with it, and uh, you'll see why when you hear this amazing solo. I'm going to do backing chords during the solo in the middle. together and what I will quite often do is a rubato intro so um, in fact just a D minor and then you might do something like band um, make sure that they know that you're in charge of this because there's no way that uh, it's going to work the other way around um, so you have got to signal the chord changes or just everyone stays out until you get to the um, the rhythm at the end where you signal the, the, the rhythm that you want and then it's in two Do the melody again or you can go into a solo. If you want to do the melody then here's the place for some nice double stops. Um, so for the very first note we're going to use what's called a scale of sixths and I do have a video all about this where basically the melody note is going to have a note underneath it on the lower string which is going to be a sixth below. This one is not the scale of six, this is a different one where it just happens to be convenient to go and then it's back to the scale of sixths. And when you're following this scale of sixths or any other form of harmony, you certainly don't have to do the same harmony all the way through. You can just basically do the easy bits 
and uh, if it's not falling under the fingers then just leave it out and it, it really won't matter. On the high E I always do a harmonic just because it's easier to get that in tune than it is <laughs> blessing you down properly. Stuff like that you can do a four note, uh, I don't know what that's called, where you drag up to the top of the chord. So I'm going to do um, twice round speeding up because that's something I've also discovered Band in a Box can do. Um, so we're going to do various different approaches as we're going through it. When you get when it gets fast enough, and you can't do it unless it's fast, then you can do kind of detaché stuff. fast but we'll just see uh, how it goes. I hope you enjoyed this. If you would like a copy of the dots, then subscribe and send me an email. And I'd be very happy to send you a PDF. I do have a collection of Russian tunes from my repertoire. I think there's around 13 or 14 of them, all from this kind of era. And that is available free to my Patreons, but only to them. So check this out if that's what you're interested in. And uh, I will see you again soon. Bye for now.